Blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name. And that is true. That is uh, exactly the response when we see our God close, but yet mighty and lifted up. Uh, we want to welcome you today. Imperial Community Church is here. We are physically open, and we're also continuing our presence online. So if you're watching us online, we just want to invite you, if you're in the area, if you're local Imperial community, come on in. We want you to come in and feel safe, secure. We have every step, taken every step to be a, uh, a COVID-free um, facility. Uh, and so we just want you to come worship with us. Um, today, happy Father's Day, everybody. For all you dads out there, which will get all the cards and, and everything. Um, and uh, the texts, I got a text this morning from my son. He said, happy Father's Day to the greatest father in the world. And he said after that, but my sample size is a little small. And then my, my daughter, my daughter, she uh, texts me and she says, happy Father's Day. May your Father's Day be better than your jokes. So... What can I say? My other daughter, she admits that I tell a whole bunch of dad jokes because all the punchlines are apparent. So I have to... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be around all day. <laughs> but we are having fun. And if you groaned, that's good. If you laughed, I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> um, we do have, in a moment, a slideshow of our dads for those of you who submitted pictures. So I just want you to uh, sit back and relax and I'll make every effort to uh, make sure this shows on the, the camera as well. Um, announcements for today. Uh, we do um, have our offering box in the back. So if you uh, were expecting to have us pass the plate, uh, we don't do that right now. We, we're sticking it right in the box. So feel free to do so. And those of you online want to contribute, you can, if you're local, just come on by the church office. We have a, uh, a mail slot you can drop it in. Please use an envelope uh, so the, the, the maintains the privacy of your giving. And also, um, you can donate online. We have on our website at icciv.org have a giving option there as well. So um, continue your stewardship, but also continue your walk in faith. Uh, to in these days when there's so much tribulation out there, we know that uh, God is calling us to, to serve him joyfully with confidence that he is in control. Um, other announcements that I can think of is that we will not be having a, a, a church service tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, allowing uh, families to, to get together and do so. Um, and I thank you because that does allow Karen and myself to uh, get back over the hill to perhaps see our kids tonight. Um, I do have one request for everybody who hears my voice. R.B. Sanchez taught me how to edit the videos to make sure that the subtitles happen on our online presence. Because if you're watching, but you like to see the subtitles in English or Spanish, you can do so. There's an option for that. I spent three and a half hours editing my sermon and those the text that went through there. I am asking you, please, if you have a desire to help me, do so. This is this is not what I call a it's a it's a grievous task of sitting down and hearing the words and typing it in, making sure punctuation is there and also words are correct. Um, it's simple, but it's time consuming. I don't know how he has done it all this time. So I'm asking you, you, yes, you, any one of you would love to help be a part of our production team. This is your chance to step up. Contact me or uh, one of the deacons or elders. They'll, they'll help you also get to the right person. So that's, that's our messages for today. Let's open up in a word of prayer and then get on with our worship. Father God, we are so grateful today. We're so grateful that you've called us to be a part of this body, this family. And Lord, we ask that we uh, would worship you in spirit and in truth. We come today, Lord, with hopeful hearts 
and Lord, in proud confidence of who you are, that each day is a day walking with you. I ask, Father, that you would take the burdens of our heart, though, and, and lift them away. And Lord, may we put them on your cross, on your back, because you carry us. And Lord, because of that, we have joy. We have an expectation of this. And we just want to look for ways that we may be able to minister to our friends, our neighbors, our family, our community. And we just thank you, Lord, for all this. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for those of you who submitted the pictures. If I didn't get them this year, well, I'm not going to promise for another year. <laughs> there I am. My voice is back. 
So we will be in Revelation. Before we start, though, I just uh, because of the, the the time we have, I just wanted to uh, do an, a little bit more prayer time. Um, we, as a church, meet on Sunday night for our prayer time, and and um, since we will be uh, deferring that this week, I just wanted to uh, take time and. Um, Pray for the needs in general of our church and um, lift them up before the Lord before we start our sermon and um, pray along with me. And and if you have additional prayers, pray them as well. Just in your heart, lift them up to the Lord, knowing that he is an omniscient God and he hears and sees all. So Lord, we just want to bow before you. We, we say thank you. We thank you that... Uh, as we study Revelation, we get a picture of who Jesus is even more. His glorified, resurrected body and his, his um, immense being that he is, um, not limited by humanity uh, anymore. And so, Father, we just are thankful for that. We come to you today um, grateful again with a, a, a thankful heart for the opportunity we have. Uh, we've made it through this week. We look ahead to next. But today... We stop and we we focus on you. We're so grateful, Father, that you are our Heavenly Father. And um, since this is Father's Day, we want to honor you as well. Father, I just pray for our church. I pray for our members, those who are um, uh, recovering from surgery and illnesses, those who are um, uh, still staying clear, being checked for COVID-19. Lord, we pray, we pray for these families because um, cabin fever is setting in. It's tough to stay seated in, in, in one place for so long. But Father, we do so because it gives us an opportunity to focus on you, to remember what's really important in our life. When we take away, you know, the sporting events, we take away the concerts and the entertainment that sometimes fill up our life. And it leaves us with the opportunity to read more, to pray more, to reach out to one another, reconnect. And truly, Lord, this church is a church without walls. And Lord, this building doesn't matter anyways. It's our friends, our family, our members. That's what matters. So, Father, we pray for our own families at this time. I lift them up to you. I ask, Father, you bless them. Lead them, correct them when need be, and also, Lord, just to uh, keep them safe through this time. I ask, Lord, that you would just also um, prepare our hearts for when you come back. Lord, it could be today, Jesus, you could come back. But even so, if you don't, may we be even more prepared tomorrow to do so, to greet you in the air. So, Lord, we give you this. We, we, we honor you with our prayer. We honor you with our, our giving. We honor you with our service. Lord, may it all come together for you. And we just thank you, Lord, for this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, you know, I was noticing online. I've been looking at the videos on our YouTube channel. And sometimes I'm just so serious. And, and I want to be more joyful. I want to, I want to exude the, the confidence we have in Christ. I want to um, be celebratory and, and, and do so. So I just pray that, uh, you know, as, as we go on and we get better at this, I know, I know I have a face made for radio. And so, you know, I just, uh, you know, we look past that. Um, today I don't have PowerPoint slides due to the fact that I spent so much time on our on our Father's Day uh, slides. And then this morning, the computers decide they want to do a Microsoft update or something. And so you lose a half hour, and I'm praying, Dear Lord, please open this computer up. <laughs> Let me finish what I'm doing. But, so here we are. We start off Revelation chapter 2. Um, I will be reading verses 1 through 7. For those of you here uh, in the auditorium or at home, uh, in respect to God's word, let's please uh, stand as I read verses 1 through 7. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, 
the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds, your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. And you have persevered and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first. Or else I am coming to you, will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Yet this you do have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of the life which is in the paradise of God. You may be seated. You know, I, I, I already told my dad jokes for the, for the morning already. However, I have one more because all men can tell dad jokes, right? All guys can, even if they aren't a dad. They just have to settle on being a faux pas. Get it? But I'm done. Actually, I had that one written down. <laughs> now, last week I gave you an assignment and I said, take time this week and do some study on Revelation 1, verses 12 through 16. Because in that area, it's an extended look in symbolic fashion of Jesus Christ. So many different terms. And when we study the glorified Christ, we gain an appreciation of who he is. And it grows our vision of who God is. So I hope you took time to do so. And like I mentioned previously, some had done it and turned it in as homework. And I, I'm going to look at it later and enjoy it. But um, that, that comes from a teacher. You know, they, they actually submitted it as homework. It's for your personal edification. Um, it gives you confidence in God when you grow in your understanding of who he is. It will develop your Christian character and your spiritual awareness. So take the opportunity this week, continue to study in those areas. We're leaving chapter 1. We're leaving what was called the things which you had seen. And that was the, um, the outline that was given in verse 19. And we're heading now into chapters 2 and 3. Chapters 2 and 3 being letters to seven churches in Asia, Asia Minor. And you could call this the things which are. There are seven actual churches. These aren't just made up names. They're named in Revelation 1, verses 4 and 11. And these letters were written because they're all in one letter. These letters were meant to be distributed and read amongst all the churches. And there's also many more churches in this area. So it's not as though these are the only seven churches. There's, there's hundreds of churches. But these were picked up. They had specific content. And each of the letters, when you read them, today we, we just read Ephesians, right? The church to Ephesians. And there's seven verses. And within these seven verses, you will find a description of Christ that was taken from chapter 1. You'll find also an acknowledgement of, Christ says, I know of. And then he tells them, I know of your deeds, your tribulation, your poverty. God recognizes a characteristic of one of these, uh, of these churches. And then he has a charge. I have this against you. He said, but I have this against you. And then he also has a promise. He says, he who overcomes... So that's the format of each of these letters. And it follows that similarly. 
There, now there's some variations because the church of Philippi didn't have any problem. He didn't tell them, I had something against you. But for most, you'll see this format. And some Christian leaders in the past, or, or even currently, have asserted that these letters are to be interpreted kind of like your life cycle as a believer. And so they say, you you can go through you know, losing your first love, falling into sin, uh, allowing for this uh, uh, sinful practice around you. Or it could be the life cycle of a church. A church from their birth, conception, to its spiritual death. And others have even said, well, this is a model of what has happened, a timeline from second chapter of Acts, the birth of the church, all the way through to the when Christ comes back, that the church will experience these periods. But I'm going to pass on the over-spiritualization of this passage. The reason being is this isn't like a road map that you could trace like a psychological event of grief or loss where they talk about having five stages of grief. Any of these experiences in Revelation 2 and 3 could happen in any order or not happen at all in your life or in the life of the church or the universal church from, you know, time of Christ until now. And a person, true, a person or a church may experience one of these, but not all of them, or in that order. A person or church can actually experience one of these difficult stages of spiritual growth, spiritual warfare, but there can always be a reset or a reversal because of the ability to repent and come back to Christ. And that's based on 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So these cycles or these letters don't fit that this has to happen. The other thing is they're all happening all at once, at one time. So there's no history, there's no progression. It's just that these churches have these issues. Let's start looking at the passage because these letters have good news, bad news, and good news. Kind of like how you want to actually approach somebody when you want to share something, you, you've seen something. You always come with them and you say, hey, I'm so glad to see you, or, you know, you're doing such a, a good job. However, have you considered? It's a, it's a good way of approaching people, and God is doing this to these churches. He says to them, first of all, um, you know, the letter of Ephesus, he says a description of Christ. He goes, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. That was in chapter one, and now we see it as a, a characteristic of Christ. And when we see this, holding the seven stars in his right, in his right hand, and the one who walks among the, the lampstands, we're seeing Christ's sovereignty. We're seeing that he watches over and he cares for the churches. He, he is monitoring and interacting with them as he walks among them. He cares for us. And he's the head of the church, right? Christ, it says that we're the body and he's the head. We're the bride of Christ. Because if you look, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 you can turn in your Bible to Ephesians 5.23. Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. That's the relationship that we have. That we are a, a servant of Christ. And that he himself is the head. He's the lead. He's the savior of the body. Not only are we the body of Christ. We're also the bride of Christ. Revelation 21 is a very uh, 
a succinct uh, passage at the end of time where in verse 9, Christ is saying, come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in verse 27 of chapter 21, he says, only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So we as believers are part of the bride of Christ, the collective. Only those, though, whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So that's the first description of Christ that we visit in these churches. He's sovereign. Now there's an acknowledgement. If you look at verse 2, I know your deeds and your toil, your perseverance, and you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not. And you found them to be false. And you have persevered and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. There's so much in this passage right here. When it says that you have toiled, toiling is productive labor. Toiling is when you break a sweat doing something. And you work hard at it. And it, it creates uh, the endurance part. Um, the perseverance, withstanding the hardship. Perseverance is, is like if you're trying to uh, walk in a windstorm or a snowstorm, hail, rain, driving, and it's very, very much driven against you. And you set yourself and you progress. And it's, it's the kind of fight that you have. And you persevere. You withstand this hardship. You, you give everything you need and more in order to attain that goal. I guess in football, you think of the offensive line as they're pushing against the defense. They're taking the hits from the defensive linemen and they're, they're locked in and they're pass blocking. They persevere and they endure and they give forward because they don't give up. It's a sustained effort. And that's what our Christian life is like. It can be very difficult because God asks us to serve in his army. And so we, we break a sweat for God. We do the things that he asks us to do with joy, but we do them. We persevere and we endure. We pray without ceasing. We don't give up. These Ephesians cannot tolerate evil men. This is part of their accommodation. They test those who call themselves apostles. Back in the first century, you know, they didn't have a Bible. They had people delivering letters or teachers showing up in the name of the, the leaders of the church. So people would show up on their doorstep and say, I have a message for you. Well, the, the, the church of Ephesians would hear them out and they would test them against what they knew. And they found them to be wanting. The hard part here is where he says, but you have left your first love. In the New Living Translation, this verse is translated, you don't love me or each other as you did at first. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. And really, isn't that true? Uh, it's a matter of priorities. We uh, think of this in terms of marital relationships, but really it's all relationships. When we care for one another and we love one another, we um, reached out, we became honest and open, and we built the relationship. But sometimes we focus on something else and we leave that relationship building behind. We say, okay, I've found my friends or my wife, husband. I've got that taken care of. Now I'm going to go on and focus on, well, we need a new place to stay, a new house. We need a better job. 
Uh, we need to, to um, move to another area. And we, we focus on the task rather than the, the relationships. And we leave that alone. And we think we're doing a good job at it, but we've ignored our first love. We think, okay, now that we've built that relationship, it's one and done. I don't have to maintain it as well as it took me to gain it. We tend to forget what we have and we focus on the next real thing. And sometimes that's not wrong to focus on the next real thing, to be responsible. But what is wrong is when you leave your friend, your partner, your wife, your husband behind, or kids, you focus on something else. Because there's a lot of good things to focus on. Careers, house, retirement, kids, all these things. The wife asked her husband wistfully. She said, honey, how come you never say that you love me anymore? He replies, wife, the day we got married, I told you I loved you. And I'll let you know if anything changes. That doesn't work. We have to remember that it's important that relationships are to be nurtured. Just like a flower. You have to till the ground. You have to nourish it, water it, pull the weeds. And all the time, making sure you're doing it in a way that it's going to grow this plant. Because sometimes people can kill the plant. Just let you know. Give it the right attention, the right amount. Always put in as much to maintain a relationship as it took to gain the relationship. Because let's, let's do it in a term that we can understand. You buy a new car, and it's a beauty, right? Shiny, clean, runs really good. But what happens if you don't do anything to take care of it? You don't wash it. You put in the lowest possible gas, grade gas. You don't do the oil changes. You ignore the engine lights. What's going to happen to that car? Well, it's going to go visit right and night, apparently. But, uh, uh, David, if you have a car and you don't take care of it, it's going to just collapse and it's going to stop working. And then at the end, if you want it to get working, it's going to be much more of an expense to do so. So you want to take care of what you have. And that goes for people, too. You want to take care of those relationships because not they don't last and the thing about the church of Ephesus it was known for its love it was it was the example of love to all of Asia the word went out these people these Christians at the church of Ephesus they really care for one another and us in Acts 19, they changed the whole area that they lived in because they, they turned from idol worship to serve God. They walked away from witchcraft. They burnt everything that was of, uh, abhorrence to God. Even in the book of Ephesians. And that's the cool thing about this. We have actual a letter, previous letter to them. In Ephesians 1.5, it says, For this reason I, too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints. That's how the book opens, with a commendation about their love for all the saints. And the, the letter, the book of Ephesians, the letter ends with an emphasis about love. Ephesians 6.24, Paul writes and says, Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an incorruptible love. An incorruptible love. Pure love. And one that won't break down. But 30 years later, this church, Christ says, I have this against you. You have left 
your first love. And in verse 5, he writes and says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first. Remember, repent, and return. That is really good information for all of us. Remember where you've fallen from. Think back. Repent. See things like God sees things. Repent. And then return. Do the things you did at first. Because if not, it says, I will come. I will remove your lampstand. To remove the lampstand is that he takes it from the place of prominence where it is and he puts it back away because it doesn't serve a useful purpose. And that's a challenge to us. Think back now because it says remember from where you've fallen. Think back to your newfound faith when you first really came into an understanding of of God and you asked Christ into your heart. Think back. What did that look like? You're excited. You were freshly forgiven. You felt clean. Your prayer and Bible reading was exciting. And you talked about spiritual matters, right? To everybody who'd listen. And some who possibly didn't want to listen. But you shared your faith. Let me tell you about what happened to me. Nowadays, would our younger Christian self even recognize our older Christian self? Looking at that? Return. Remember, return. Because To lose your love is to allow that flame to flicker and extinguish. In verse 6, I just want to say here where he says that you, you have this against the Nicolaitans. We're going to develop this next week because in the church of Pergamum, it's one of their main emphasis. So we're going to pass through, just allow us to... Uh, Put a little note that we're going to talk about that next week because it's more of an admonition to them than Ephesus. Then it says, the Spirit says to the church, a promise. And now, this promise to those who overcome, this is a promise to the churches. So each of the churches, not just specifically the one church, but all the churches. And then by extension, through history, this promise is extended to us, to him who overcomes. I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Tree of life. That sounds familiar. Where did we first hear of the tree of life? Genesis. Genesis. Thank you. Yes. What was then forbidden in the Garden of Eden because of the sin, the fall of man, is now once again a reality to eat the fruit of the tree of life. That's in paradise. And that's our our future heavenly relationship that we have with God. And it's the result of a fully restored relationship with God fully restored. God, not far away, out of place, not unattainable, unknowable, but God who sees us, who walks among us, nurtures us, grows our faith, tells us when we're doing right, and lets us know when we're doing wrong. And then once again gives us the promise a fully restored relationship with God. 
as we get ready to wrap this section up, I just wanted to let you know that our relationship with God is not a ritual. It's a relationship. The things about losing your first love and the admonition to, to think back, practice those things that you did back then, and reignite and grow that flame, feed the flame. That's what a relationship is. Let's not forget about that this week, especially when you're walking amongst all the other people in your community. We're back out and about. We see people. That's what our church is like. That's what our relationship is like. A light. A light in the darkness. I do admit we have to confess. We have to admit when we've done it wrong. We have to humble ourselves and bow before God and ask for forgiveness. And to do so is counterintuitive to our pride. We're not weak because we confess, but we're strong. We win and we gain so much when we actually take a look at who we are, measure it against what Scripture says, and then bring our life in alliance with that. So we confess. Even as Christians, we confess when we fall short of that standard which God has given us. Nobody's perfect. I'm not. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. Nobody's perfect. So that's why God has given us this wonderful opportunity to pray, to ask Him to forgive our sin, and make us the kind of person he wants us to be in Christ. It's not a church building. It's a living church. It's a, a blessing to be a part of that. So we profess it. We've confessed it to the Lord. We profess it to others. And that's our task when he says to go and make disciples. This week, my challenge to you is to evaluate your love relationship with God. Evaluate that as the primary measure of your faith. And if there's a change in how you first lived your life under Christ, and how now that maybe you're just walking through the, the pages. Confess it. Remember this. Go back and do the things you did at the beginning. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, now we come before you humbly, knowing that in our life we have allowed things to take our focus off of you. Good things even. Focus on our family, our, our career. Even doing good things in our community. But Lord, if they take us away from our first love with you, if we've replaced knowing you with activity, Father, we confess it. And we come before you now and ask you to, once again, teach us. Restore us, Lord. We don't want our love for you to go away. We don't want to lose that. I just thank you, Father, that you hear us and you honor our prayers so that this week may be a week where we Reignite the flame. Spend time with you. Turn off the noise. And just focus on you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Once again, we had to open up your word. 
And may you just bring uh, an honor and a blessing to our church for doing so, for upholding your standard. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a great week. And now, if Brian will close us in. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. All oh, his love for me. All his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free and deep. I am a child of God. Yes, I. Ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. Do I need this? Being with us today um, here in person and those of you at home. Um, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, this wonderful part of your word that reminds us to remember 
that day when we first, first trusted you and, and to repent for things that have pulled us away. And Lord, help us to, to return to you and, and do the things and just obey you and love you and, and restore that relationship in any parts that have, have maybe fallen by the wayside. Thank you for um, our time together. We do pray for those who couldn't worship with us and, and some who may be sick or with problems that you'll minister to them. Um, help us, Lord, to return next week to, to um, worship you again. In Jesus' name, amen. You're beautiful.